Shabbat Shalom. I greet you from an empty North Shore Synagogue. What was supposed to be an exciting Shabbat, Pashat Vayakel Pekude, finishing the book of Exodus, Shabbat Mavarachim, of saying the prayers to welcome in the new month of Nisan and the lead up to Pesach. We find ourselves in an unprecedented situation of the shuls that are locked, communities in isolation, and as we speak, borders being closed. Who would have thought that this could possibly be happening in our time? But this coronavirus is a threat to our seniors, a threat to even younger members of our community and thus governments have taken these precautions. We have seen what is happening in countries around the world, in particular Italy, Iran and China. And if we want to prevent that from happening here, decisions had to be made, including the painful one of shutting the synagogues. This means that we are all home for Shabbat. And whereas before, last week, the week before, you could, you could rely on the community for the, uh, the, uh, the energy of Shabbat, the spirit of Shabbat, and Judaism. Not so this week. Each person is stuck at home each person is with their families for, Shabbat, for this Shabbat. And thus, the challenge for every one of us is, what am I going to do to make Judaism more viable in the world today? I could have given over my responsibility to the shuls, to those who do the heavy lifting of the daily and weekly minyan. Not so this Shabbat. On this Shabbat, each and every one of us must take responsibility to bring a little more light. When we light the Shabbat candle shortly, think about bringing the light of healing into this world. When you sit around the table this evening for Shabbat, maybe add an extra tune. Maybe sing at the Shabbat table, Lecha Dodi, with your family. The sounds and love of Shabbat should still permeate the community, even if we as a community cannot gather. This is unprecedented. And we have a responsibility. And many of us might think, there's no problem if I don't listen to the news and I go about my daily, work, daily, work, daily routines, Besides no toilet paper, life is normal. The sun rose this morning, there's a blue sky, life is good. But life is not good. And we were brought up in a generation of I, of the iPhone and iPad. Suddenly you can understand that we are part of a community. And this is what coronavirus has taught us. You cannot act in isolation. Your actions have a global effect. During the past week, I was talking and teaching the students. And we discussed this very, very point. I was talking about it in the context of tefillah, in the, shul, in the shul service. That there are some people who engage in tefillah, and there are some people who choose not to engage. But those who choose not to engage, instead of sitting quietly, started talking. And that destroyed the atmosphere for those who were trying to pray. And I said to them, the purpose of the Shur Minyan is to teach you the value of your actions and being mindful for others. 
respect the rights of others and care for them. And if you can learn it in a shul, you'll take that same message and apply it to the way you live your life out there. When we walk outside, who was washing their hands? Who was thinking, I've got a little cold or a sniffle, I'll go to work. Those personal decisions can impact colleagues, communities. And for that reason, we are forced to lock down, to take responsibility for my actions with regards to the community. There is a story about a ship that sinks and the life and the, and the, the survivors gather in the lifeboat. When all of a sudden everywhere around them they see or feel that there's water at the bottom of their lifeboat. And they look to their right and they see one of the, one of the passengers busy boring a hole at the bottom of the, by his feet. And they say, what are you doing? And he says, it is hot. And I wanted to cool my feet. So I bored a hole to allow some of the seawater in so my feet can be cool. And they all look at him in shock and says, your reactions, your selfish actions have impacted on every single one of us, endangered every single one of us. And he says, but the hole is only by my feet. The hole sinks the boat. This is what we have to think about this Shabbat. I'd like to conclude with the following story. Many years ago, there were two famous brothers. Rav Zusha of Anipol and Rav Elimelech of Lezhensk. Two famous righteous brothers, both of whom were Hasidic masters. And it happened that for some reason they were arrested and they were put in prison. And they are in prison with all the refract. And in the cell they noticed that a bucket for people to do their business. And the one turns to the other and says, We cannot pray here, for the bucket is filled with waste. And the other one responds, True, the situation we have at the moment teaches us that we cannot serve God through prayer. But we can still serve God in other ways. So they started to dance and sing because they couldn't pray to God. The guards heard the commotion, come to the, uh, the cell and say, what's going on over here? And the prisoners say, these guys are dancing because of the bucket. So the guards said, we cannot have this. They walked inside and removed the bucket. With the bucket removed, the two righteous brothers were able to return to their service of their God and to pray with full conviction. In the same way as we have enthusiasm and excitement to come to shul on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, to celebrate with, with friends and family as a community and sing together l'chad odi, this Shabbat we will serve God by not coming to shul and not singing communally the Chadodi. Coronavirus, we still don't know the effects. But with countries in lockdown and families isolated, there are things that we can still do. First of all, we need to take care of those who are isolated. Pick up the phone, send a text to five friends 
See how they are going, how they are coping at this time. Here at the shul, we will be calling you just to make sure that you are okay. If you need help, please contact us. We are there for you. Let us use this opportunity, although separated physically, we are connected virtually. It is with great sadness that the service is not being conducted this evening or tomorrow. And please God, this wave should pass and we should be able to return back to normal operating services. But one thing I want to leave you with. Those of us who are feeling upset and are saddened by the fact that the shul is closed. When the shuls reopen, come back. Be part of us. Be with us. Join us. Don't sit there and be sad when the shul is closed. But when it's open, don't come. When the shuls reopen, please come and join us. Be part of the community. For we are greater and better with everyone's involvement. I wish you all Shabbat Shalom with your families. Stay safe and keep safe. Over the next few weeks, the shul will be sending you links to YouTube videos, to articles. And if we continue in this vein and have to shut for Pesach, I will send out a YouTube video of a demonstration Seder, how to run your Seder for you and for your family. Shabbat Shalom and may the new month, the month of Nisan, be filled with Nisin of Geula of Redemption. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>